So we're going to talk tomato varieties, uh, my favorites, what we use, what we changed over the years. Um, that should be great. So it's late January at the farm, and that's the time when we do all of the grafting. Uh, grafting is just when I take the tomato I want uh, and stick it on a rootstock, which uh, is going to help production and also lower uh, soil-borne diseases. I do it mostly for the production aspect of it. Um, and I do it with all of my tomatoes. All tomatoes grown at Neversink Farm are all grafted. Um, I want maximum production per square foot, and that's the way to do it, is uh, with grafting. There's obviously a lot of other things we do, but that's one really easy way to get it done. And uh, they're all uh, healing right now. Uh, not all of them, but we have the first batch heating right now, uh, healing. And so I just want to talk about all the varieties that we do. When we started out, we did just uh, beefsteak tomatoes. You know, that's really the most popular tomato uh, in our markets when we started. Um, everybody just wanted to get a red, big beefsteak for slicing, salads, um, when we're, just when we're talking about larger tomatoes. And so it just made sense, because we didn't even grow that much, you know, why not just stick to one? And then as, as heirlooms became more popular and our growing methods became better and our infrastructure became better, then we started to add in heirlooms. Heirlooms, they just don't have the production that a nice greenhouse beefsteak hybrid is gonna have, but people really like them. You can charge a little bit of more money for them so you can make up for a little bit of that uh, lower production, not entirely. And, but when we started, we just, you know, threw out a big wide net thinking people would want a wide range of heirlooms, you know, striped ones, yellow ones, purple ones, purple red ones, big ones, smaller ones. And I found that our customers at the farmer's markets really just walked away with anywhere from one to three tomatoes. And when they made those decisions, they went for, you know, a brandy wine type, and then if they, if they were gonna get one, and then if they were gonna get two, they'd get a brandy wine and like a Cherokee purple. And if they were gonna get three, that would be the only time they would get maybe a brandy wine, Cherokee purple, and maybe a yellow heirloom. So we just started cutting out varieties and cutting out varieties until we were left with just three big slicing heirlooms. And that would be a red Brandywine type, a Cherokee purple type, and then like a German Johnson type. And then when Johnny's came out with their um, improved heirloom slash hybrid type, where it takes the great taste of heirlooms, gives it a bit more production, uh, a bit more reliability, and they have the three colors, red, black, yellow it was perfect for me because now i can have the heirlooms but have much better uh, reliability on them grow them indoors and really maximize our production and having just those three types the monero the marbone and the margold gives the three colors um, I believe it's a breeder in France who developed them. The taste is phenomenal, the reliability is phenomenal. But just having those three types, then when I go to market, I have a very nice spread. I don't have a whole mix of different things. It's much easier to keep track of. Wholesale, I have all the colors and restaurants don't seem to mind because when they're serving a plate in a restaurant, 
they're really only going to serve, they just want to make sure there's colors on the plate. They can't serve 50 different types of tomatoes to a, one customer. You know, they're maybe getting three slices, four slices on a plate. So as long as I have three different colors, perfectly happy. They don't need a whole bunch of variety. And customers will ask, do you have this, do you have that? But when we do have them, it doesn't seem like they really buy those. Um, so I feel like I really fill the market demand with just three types. You know, I feel more than that, it's just a choice overload. So for the heirlooms, I'll go for those three types. I really like it. Um, you know, and those can be substituted with the brandy wine or the German Johnson or Cherokee Purple. And those work great too, and we grew those for a long time. Um, and sometimes we grow them if we're going to grow in a less protected spot, like in the movable, we'll do more traditional heirlooms. Um, but we always graft them anyway. For the greenhouse large tomato slicers, um, <clears throat> we, I, I really liked and I grew for a long time the Geronimos. Geronimos are big and incredibly productive, especially when you have them grafted. They produce, you know, gangbusters when they, when, whenever, when the environment's right. You know, you have to steer them a bit, you know, you have to make sure temperature and water is steered correctly. Um, but when you have everything uh, perfected, then they can just produce a hell of a lot of tomatoes. Uh, we're now trying to experiment with bigger tomatoes because we, you know, we find that the market really likes uh, the bigger the beef steaks because at the end of the market, the smaller ones are always left behind and I feel like we can get bigger ones in there and the weight will be higher, we'll sell more, we'll increase our sales every time we have, we sell a tomato. So we're, we've been working with big beef and big beef is a great tomato. Um, but I'm always looking at, does this thing have the resistance I need for our greenhouse? Because when you, once you're growing inside, uh, you know, leaf mold is always present. And so I really want things that are leaf mold resistant. I can't get it all the time, but that is going to steer my choice. So in the cherry tomato, where there's, you know, a bit more choice and, you know, I can choose one red cherry over another red cherry just based on that, then leaf mold really directs me on which one plus production. So for the red cherry, I really like Socorro. We've been doing those for a long time. When those are right and grafted, the uh, production is great. And I like the size. I want my cherry tomatoes to fill up boxes, you know, that's... You know, the, the less you have to harvest to fill up a pipe box, the better. You know, really tiny tomatoes, it just takes more work, you know, for me to fill up a pipe box. So, Secor is nice and early. It's the first tomato we do. And then after that, I want to add in some color. As the season progresses and there's more tomatoes out there, now I want a mix box. So, I, I want to add in a yellow and a black just like in the heirloom varieties. So I've been working with Torangina for a few years and Johnny's this year has just brought it out, which is great, so now everybody can use it. Um, but we've been using it for a long time. It's a good one, it's a greenhouse producer. And then the old favorite is the black cherry. Black cherry is really the only good black cherry tomato and it grows nice and big. Um, it's not as productive as, you know, a Sakura or a Torangina, but the size is good, and I really like that. And then I like to throw in one oblong. And so for that, I like the Artisan, the yellow with the uh, red stripes in it. Which one is that? It's Blush. It's called Blush. Um, we don't grow a lot of it because I don't want it to fill up the pipe too much, but one or two of those in a pint take up a lot of room, add interest to it, and they're really good tomatoes. But I don't grow a lot of artisans just because of the production and uh, they're much harder to trellis and keep tame. Um, 
So that's, that's the range of all the tomatoes that we grow. We're always, you know, leaving space for experimentation. Anytime we think there's something that we might want to add to the mix, we leave a little bit of room and try a new variety and always trying to look for something that's more productive, tastes great, the customers like, and has the resistance we need, which is really important because resistance is better than battling a disease or trying to do something to prevent it. Resistance uh, works better than anything.